Hi everyone, my name is D Cruz and welcome back to my channel and if you're new make sure to subscribe and I will have my social media links down here. Anyways, um, so today I have something super fun planned. So I will be giving you guys a lab tour and show kind of like a little step by step with my friend Jalil and my grad mentor Jose. So I will be kind of showing you guys what exactly it is that I do in the lab. Kind of the method of how I feed my devices. But basically what's been going on for the past I think like 2-3 weeks is it's been a lot. I'm enjoying all the feedback you guys have been giving me. So many of you have reached out to me through messenger on instagram and it, it feels really nice i really appreciate all the nice words said to me and i'm so happy i'm able to help so many of you decide what major you want to go to or decide what career path you want to go in because it just makes me super grateful like i said i do make these videos um targeting underrepresented minorities first generation college students or anyone that just feels lost because i was there and i had no one to look up to so i'm trying to use this as a platform where i can project myself in a better light and guide others to what i'm trying to do and hopefully it helps you guys kind of so i'm really happy that it's helped a lot of you please let me know what other questions you guys have because i'm so open to answering them and if I can't answer them, I'll definitely get back to you. But yeah, I hope you guys are excited just as I am to see what's coming up. But I have been super stressed out with some of the assignments. What I learned from all of that is to ask for help. I was kind of keeping it all bottled up inside me, which is not the best thing to do. I don't recommend anyone doing that. But I talked to one of the coordinators and I just kind of like vented and admitted that I felt behind and that I was scared about my starting my own projects because I did start it I think like two weeks ago and it's a project that hasn't been like I guess done before so no one's gotten like the best results so I was kind of just I, I felt a little discouraged knowing that my project that I wouldn't be able to complete it by the symposium so I kind of talked to her about that and I talked to her about my personal statement for this Hawaii conference that which I've talked about before and just overall like assignments do in UROC because in the program that I'm in I have to go to lab and I also have other assignments due separately so it's kind of a lot and I'm not complaining about it at all like I am so grateful about it it's just it's, it's a lot so it was a lot to take in and I kind of felt like I was suffocating and everything because I was so behind and I was just so used to like leaving things a last minute which i shouldn't have done but i kind of picked my ass up uh last, last night and i kind of just worked on it and last week also when i talked to the coordinator she kind of helped me see how to view things and just helped me understand that i'm not the only one going through this that the entire room of the research students were going through this as well so that helped me a lot um in terms of my project i have i think five devices and i haven't seen the best results yet it seems that there's a little complication in the channels of where i feed them so i've made six more and i have to make 20 so overall I'll have 25 <laughs> devices so those would be the 25 that i will research and that i will have on my poster um it's been a lot of just kind of understanding how to accept a workload and just work at my own pace. This video will be kind of short because I, it took me a while to get back on my feet. I've just been super out of it and stuff, but I wanted to make sure to come back on and show you guys this lab tour. It's a little cringy because I was super nervous and I, when I'm nervous to do something, I act a certain way and it's really annoying, but <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary made by Jose. So without further ado, this is the video of the lab tour. Friends, follow me. <laughs> this is my lab TA. He's gonna give you guys a tour of the lab. This is the lab tour. Yes, the very mythical door of wonders. Look as I close the door of wonders. Ooh, I will open the door of wonders. <gasps> Look at the shy undergrad. Careful, we might intimidate him. <laughs> Hi guys, so I'm gonna give you guys a no, tour. Uh, no, I can't do this. Hi guys, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the cardiovascular lab I'm working in. So this is my friend, another undergraduate, Hi. Jalil, and we're gonna show you guys what we're gonna do right now. So we can make our way over here. Oh. These are the fridges we have in which we supply the cells food. So this is how it looks like on the inside. That's enough. <laughs> And this is where we have the fume hoods and we have biohazard materials. 
this is one of the, I don't know what this is called. Wow. So, so this is the biosafety cabinet and this is where we feed the cells. And these are, this is the microscope that I use to take pictures of the cell. And Jalil's gonna help me and we're gonna feed the some of the microfluidic devices that I talked about in last week's video. And don't forget to ethanol. Oh, yeah, sorry. always <laughs> always in lab you have to make sure you ethanol everything, like your hands, because you don't know all everything you've been touching because if we touch the cells or whatever that we're gonna use without gloves, we can risk contamination and our cells can die or grow bacteria or fungus and we don't want any of that happening. Also because my grad student I'm working for will kill me. So that's pretty much it. We need to do the whole thing over again. You totally forgot what a biosafety cabinet is it called. Says it says it right there. I can I can edit that out. Okay, you can record again. So to feed the microfluidic devices, we all we only need EGM2. I don't know what this stands for. And we need SF media to feed the stem cells. Now we have to make sure that when we feed, we only feed one cell line at a time. So we're gonna feed the microfluidic devices. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the hood. To set up the hood, you have to make sure that you lift it and you turn on the fume hood, the biosafety cabinet, and always, like I said, ethanol everything. So make sure you ethanol and you get a chem wipe, not a regular napkin or else contamination, and you wipe the fume hood. Nope. You wipe the biosafety cabinet. Once this is on, we want to make sure, so this, Exhibit A, never leave this stuff out. Leaving this stuff out can cause contamination if someone were to put it in. What is so it? these, this is called an aspirator tip, and this goes in the hazardous glass cap. Cleaner. Waste. Now this is an aspirator, and this is what we use to get rid of all the unnecessary media that we, we don't want anymore. Like I said, make sure to, ask to ethanol everything that goes inside. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and ethanol my hands, go inside the incubator, which is where we call where we put all our cells to sleep. Mm, they're not asleep. So we're gonna go ahead and take out two of the microfluidic devices. And coming from the incubator to the biosafety cabinet, we can go ahead and put it in. Can Next, you please put your hair up in a bun? Oh yeah. We're feeding the microfluidic devices. I'm gonna go ahead and ethanol in the food. Media. So just give it two sprays, put it in. And I'm also gonna ethanol this in so we can have a stand to put the food on. Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like spraying it at your face. Say hi, Jacob, you're gonna be YouTube famous. This is my oh, partner yeah. in crime and in lab. So I'm gonna be teaching Jalil how to oh. feed the microfluidic devices. So first we wanna make sure we ethanol our gloves. We don't want contamination. We also need a 200 microliter pipette. This is how it looks like. Ethanol it in. And can you pass me those tips right there? These ones? Yeah. So we're going to be using these 200 microliter tips to feed the devices. So what you do, first you have to unscrew the media. So we open the device and we have two little devices in here and we made sure to make six holes in it so that we can have it to be so we take 200 microliters of the EGM2 media. Be careful, don't touch the tip. If you touch the tip, it leads to contamination, so you have to make sure you don't touch anything, only where you want to do it. So you're gonna go ahead and stick it where the hole is and pull it in. And we don't want any bubbles or anything, so just easy like that. Afterwards, you're allowed to take these little puddles away because this is the old media coming out. Then you just take the waste out, grab a new tip, and go back in to make your little reservoirs. So to make reservoirs, you just pour little bubbles, drop, make little droplets to each side. And you switch tips and you do the same thing to the next one. And you can just put the waste anywhere. Yeah. We don't want air bubbles, so make sure you get the full 200 microliters. And we're gonna do the same thing on the H. These microfluidic devices have been are 17 days old, so a lot of the media just comes out, which is okay. You just gotta aspirate it out, which we'll do at the end. So 
all this stuff is just old media that just is coming out. So we can just suck it all up and suck everything else that we don't need. Look alive to the Okay. And I'm gonna just take out some of the bubbles because we don't like bubbles. And we're gonna make the two little reservoirs again. <laughs> and as you can see right here, there's still some media that didn't get picked up. So we're gonna take one of the aspirator tips. Don't touch the tip. And we're just gonna aspirate all that old media out. I feel like a lot of these comments are gonna be like, <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> you understood what I said? Uh, somewhat. All right. So yeah, you can so just so first get that. Pick 200, up. Right? Yeah. So you just make sure. Yeah. yeah. So you just don't. Yeah. Don't put it all the way down, but just put it. Down. Mm -hmm. so, so one click is. One click is like yeah, yeah, to, yeah to pick up, and then two clicks is to release, right? Yeah. Okay. Just go ahead and put it in one of the holes. Probably do the bottom one because if you do it from the top. Top down, the media goes out to do it bottom up. So yeah, how do you there. like see? Because it's kind of far. You'll feel it. So like just feel it. Yeah, oh, you, so can, it's you okay can put to, your, like, you can put your finger on the on the glass like this. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, so you can go ahead and put it right. You don't release yet. So that too. So right there, you're in the hole, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and release slowly. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's okay. Pour it down and then make sure you just don't get those bubbles. Okay, stop. Pull it out. Like that. Yeah, and okay. then you can spit out the rest out there. Yeah, make a little puddle. <laughs> and that's how you feed a microfluidic device.